I would ask at this time the clerk, she does have some reading to do for us, so if you would please. <clears throat> I offered to read some of this tonight with my <laughs> deep voice, so I'm not going to do it, so Debbie. Okay. Please. I um, read the first four, whereas, and the last two. <clears throat> Seeker resolution number 104 of 2013, issuing a condition negative declaration pursuant to the State Environmental Quality Review Act relative to the Center for Performing Arts and Education Project by Councilor Rizika, seconded by Councilor Graney. Whereas the Cayuga Community College proposes, proposes to construct and operate the Center for Performing Arts and Education located at 1-7 State Street in the City of Auburn, County of Cayuga, New York, and whereas the City of Auburn City Council issued a negative declaration pursuant to the State Environmental Quality Review Act for the project on February 25th, 2011, which, which negative declaration was subject to subsequent litigation by Mr. Joseph Camardo and annulled by the Appellate Division's decision dated June 8th, 2012. And whereas the college assumed lead agency status and passed a negative declaration on September 4th, 2012, which was subject to a subsequent lit litigation by Mr. Joseph Camardo. And whereas Honorable William P. Politos issued a decision and order date May 9th, 2013, declaring that the City of Auburn City Council remains the lead agency with regard to the project and that a conditioned negative declaration should be issued for the project. Number six, pursuant to 6NYCRR 617.7D, a public comment period of 30 days on the conditioned negative declaration has hereby is hereby established to run through the close of business on October 11th, 2013, or 30 days after the publication date of the CND in the ENB, wherever is later, whichever is later. Number seven, the chair of the City of Auburn City Council is hereby directed to file a condition negative declaration with respect to the project in the City of Auburn City Clerk's Office and to provide a copy of such condition negative declaration to all involved and interested agencies and provide a copy of the ENB for publication. Number eight, this resolution shall take effect immediately. Thank you. Mr. Fusco. Thank you, Mayor. At the outset, allow me to apologize for having uh, had to leave the, the building, or excuse me, this room. What, what I did in the uh, half hour, 45 minutes uh, that I was gone, was I assembled the uh, materials uh, that have been uh, supplied essentially over the last uh, couple of weeks or last three weeks uh, and uh, to make copies for presentation uh, to the clerk and filing of the, of the materials for the clerk, including right up to those materials uh, which I just received uh, this evening, which I guess was a copy of a letter by Dr. Larson that was read into the record last week uh, when I was not here. Two letters from uh, Mr. Huffman uh, outlining, one, his position on Dr. Larson's, uh, Dr. Larson's uh, 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 letter that, that I just referred to, and two, uh, his objections or his client's objections uh, to the or environmental objections to the project. Uh, also, uh, there was the uh, Nicole Copeland supplemental report, uh, which uh, uh, which Mr. Huffman provided uh, to us tonight. Uh, I've included that as well. And then lastly, I made copies, uh, tried to get it onto one page, of the photograph uh, that, um, uh, that uh, Kevin Cox, uh, on behalf of Mr. Camardo, uh, Mr. Joseph Camardo, provided us to us as well. And so that in the, where there's bullet points of the various exhibits, uh, one through I think P on the copy that uh, you may have, or that you may have a blank for that matter, uh, now that would be exhibits A through uh, X on the various bullet points, taking into consideration all of the materials, uh, both pro and con, uh, that we have uh, received on this. Also included is a copy of unimproved minutes 
uh, from the August 22nd meeting, which I, I asked our city clerk to prepare for us. Uh, I don't know whether there was an act on that yet or not. Normally it wouldn't be your course of business to approve those until a couple meetings from now. But nonetheless, uh, Mr. Huffman made, made a request in the week in a letter to me about materials involving that, and so I included it. The whole purpose is to get everything in there and then get it filed uh, with, with the clerk so that uh, any materials pro or con uh, that have been submitted in favor or against this project are part of the record should there be uh, litigation uh, as a result of uh, whatever happens tonight and, and 30 days or so uh, from tonight. For the sake of expediency, I would ask that um, I would first of all appreciate the fact that you didn't read um, the whole resolution. Uh, it's 16 or 17 pages long. I realize that in past uh, practices of this board uh, with lengthy resolutions, uh, like bond resolutions, you do tend to redact that, especially when you've got copies uh, ahead, of, uh, ahead of time, which is why I strive to get them in your hand uh, last Friday. I trust all of you have read them, and if you have any questions about the actual resolution uh, that you'll be asking to vote on tonight, uh, either I or Steve Lynch or the both of us uh, can answer those. Uh, you'll, the resolution asks uh, that you issue, in this case, a conditioned negative declaration consistent with Judge Polito's case in Supreme Court and the Appellate Division Fourth Department decision uh, regarding uh, the, the vapor barriers. Uh, all, of the, all of the answers that uh, uh, Steve had, had suggested last week uh, in his presentation uh, have been uh, reduced to a yes or no form. Uh, and I, don't, I know he brought nine other copies besides the one that he circulated to me tonight. And if the members of council don't have any, perhaps we could present them with those as well. The, what you'll be doing, uh, or what I will be asking council for you to do, is to issue a conditioned negative declaration uh, authorizing uh, the uh, mayor to so sign uh, the conditioned negative declaration. Uh, and, and to approve what's called part three of the environmental assessment form. On part two, you recognize pursuant to Steve's presentation uh, three weeks ago, or two weeks ago, uh, that there is the vapor uh, issue, uh, which uh, he recommends you mitigate by the installation of the sub slab depressurization system. Uh, that is what part three will consist of. Uh, not only the installation of the, uh, requiring the installation of the uh, vapor barrier uh, and venting system, but also ensuring that it works. That was a question uh, that one of the counselors had uh, two weeks ago. Gee, what if it's installed and it doesn't work? Uh, my recommendation to you when we've incorporated it into part three is that we also make sure that there's testing of the uh, sub slab depressurization system after the after its installation once the theater is up and running to make sure that it is working properly and that it's a safe place uh, for citizens. Between two weeks ago and uh, uh, tonight, uh, there was one other uh, issue that was uh, discussed uh, in various phone calls and communications and emails regarding whether there were materials uh, that Fire Chief uh, Digart uh, had in his possession, uh, which he might have made reference to two weeks ago, uh, but didn't share with us, I think due to the lateness of the hour. We were approaching midnight and, uh, and, and uh, he, he gave us a synopsis of uh, what those were. So what I attempted to do on uh, Friday, uh, along with the materials that the, the proposed resolution that you're voting on was circulated to you, I also had, or either I or Doug or both of us, uh, circulated uh, copies of, of uh, the various materials, field notes, uh, diagrams, and, and whatnot that the Chief Digert conducted in his field testing to see whether his apparatus uh, could adequately serve the proposed site. Uh, also, I understand that Chief Digert took 41 photographs, uh, which he provided 
copies to me on an MP3, and which I think he's prepared to show you tonight, um, if he, if he, uh, if anyone wishes, uh, regarding issues uh, like uh, accessibility, uh, turning radii. Uh, the ability of him to, to, to fight a fire in that building, uh, the width uh, or, or relative width of the street, and the various issues that Mr. Cox uh, raised uh, tonight uh, during the public to be heard uh, presentation, including his uh, uh, handing up to all of us a photo that uh, his office took, I think, on, uh, on April 8th, uh, depicting a fire truck being staged at the area. So if members of, of council wish to hear uh, from Chief Digard or see his photographs or some of them, uh, I ask that uh, you feel, feel free to call him up. Uh, I've briefed him uh, today, preparing him for just that possibility. Uh, so with that, what I think I would ask you to do, since we have a motion on the floor uh, and a second, uh, I think it would, the, would be the proper time to turn this over to a discussion phase so any members of council who have questions of either Steve or I or Jeff Digard or Brian Hicks for that matter, his name came up earlier this evening as well, uh, we can have those members speak uh, uh, during, the, during the discussion uh, uh, the discussion process and then I ask that the question be moved. Mr. Tanner is here too, I believe, isn't he? Yes, Mr. Mr. Tanner's here. I, I, the, the, I think he adequately addressed the, the question that I think Mr. Vavone raises in an affidavit uh, that was uh, that was previously made part of the record as well uh, re regarding whether whether the exception on which Mr. Hicks. Mr. Digart and Mr. Tanner are relying uh, is is able to be used uh, in a uh, in a ladder truck situation, uh, but Mr. Tanner is here again tonight since Mr. Cox raised it already once. If 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 you all didn't understand his explanation on the 22nd, I think he's prepared to speak again if anybody wishes further explanation. Andy. Um, there's a discrepancy in the, between the discussion documents of August 21st on page seven and the current documents uh, today on page nine. Uh, specifically, it says- um, Which document from today, Pete? Excuse me? Which document from today? Uh, the CES report? No, it's, uh, it's outlined in the discussion document and this is what we were given to, to review. Uh, the concentrations of VOCs detected in indoor samples are below the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, OSHA, 29 CFR 1910 Support Z, Toxic Hazardous Waste Substance Limits for Air Contempts, is recommended that data be uh, supplied. And above it here it says, the results of the test show that the samples were below the OSHA limits for air climates, but uh, in certain uh, I'm sorry, the, the, in the report, sub-slab C14 levels were recorded as 36.1 micrograms per meter cubed, 4.1 micrograms per meter cubed, and 9.1 micrograms meter cubed in indoor air, air, air CI, CCI4 letters or levels were recorded at uh, 45 micrograms per meter cubed. It says, based on these results, the New York State Department of Health guidance for evaluating soil vapor intrusion, intrusion recommends monitor. But if you look at that uh, guidance, it also says that um, monitoring is done until it is mitigated. In the uh, current document on, uh, let's see, I got it written here on page nine, it says uh, the VOCs in both reports were that the concentrations detected in air samples were below the Occupational Safety and Health Administration limits, and therefore air monitoring, other construction precautions were recommended, but not required. Um, here we're seeing some confliction here. The Department of Health guidance is, is recommending uh, uh, monitoring. It's not required, but I think that the statement is that the, the uh, levels that are indicated here 
uh, be reflected in this document. Okay, I, I think I understand your question. I don't necessarily hear a contradiction in the two documents, right? I believe you're reading from materials prepared by Mr. Lynch. I am. So I would defer to him uh, if he understands the question. I see there's a, a slightly different wording. I, I heard that, but um, I, I, I don't hear a contradiction or a discrepancy, but I'll defer to Steve. Councilor, I'm at a loss as to which document you are okay, referring to that might have been uh, handed out tonight. No, August 21st, 2013 was a discussion document, page 7 of, seven of 19. Okay. Okay, that you, you passed uh, out. If, if you just give me a moment, I'll, I'll pull it up. This is from the discussion document that yes. we had? Thank you. About mid-page. In the report, subslab CCI4. You know, list concentrations. Mm -hmm. These are my presentation notes. Council, in the meantime, what paragraph number are you on? Is it about number five or six? Well, why Steve's looking at that. I think, are the, is the page seven that you were referring to earlier, Pete, the page proposed seven, resolution? The, August the proposed resolution? The, the August 21st document, which was okay. given out before this this draft. If it, if, if while Steve is, 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 is uh, looking up what you're asking and, and formulating a response, if it helps you to understand what you're being asked tonight to do uh, is on page seven of the proposed, uh, the pro or the n numbering may have changed, it may be six or seven, depending now that there's new exhibits. Uh, but in any event, what you're being asked to make a finding of is that the VOCs detected uh, were lower uh, than the OSHA standards uh, and that uh, the monitoring was recommended I've and that the voice it's on page nine okay uh, that the That's exactly where I'm reading it from okay page nine about uh, third bullet from the top okay that would be a, that would be a page nine of one of Steve's reports of the draft. where I be what, what I would be doing is incorporating that into the resolution before you tonight mm -hmm. as a finding of, of air, air quality uh, concentrations of VOCs less than OSHA standards, but nonetheless, because monitoring was recommended, monitoring uh, the... Uh, uh, but if, again, if you read the guidelines from the Department of Health, it also recommends in the, in the same line that the uh, monitoring be, be done until mitigation. Well, the monitoring has already been conducted. Uh, it's very, uh, tests were, were taken uh, during and after, uh, after uh, demolition. What you would be asked to do tonight would be to continue additional monitoring after the installation of the mitigated, of the barrier and the, the venting system to make sure that it works. And I, and, and we've not yet gotten to Steve's part three, but in the conditions that I'm going to recommend that you set tonight are, are twofold. Not only that the project sponsor uh, install the sub slab depressurization system, but to continue to monitor the air after the installation and during the operation of the theater to make certain that the system does in fact work. Well, I found the, the bullet you were looking for. Mm -hmm. And your question is? My question is, is why, uh, why aren't we limiting, uh, listing these Concentrations and again the uh, again listing the uh, Department of Health guidance here, and is part of this explanation here. 
that seems to me that that adds some, some merit to this document. Well, I believe I was quoting from the reports that said that the mitigation and the different precautions were recommended but not required. And as uh, Mr. I, Fusco just uh, mm -hmm. explained that we are proposing that uh, continued monitoring happens right through the mitigation that we're asking to be part of the condition neg negative declaration <coughs> tonight and those mitigation actions will therefore be required. Uh, again, in, in the uh, initial sampling that was done in phase one and regarding the dry cleaner that was down the street uh, was determined was not considered as a soy source of, uh, of the con uh, vapors. Uh, testing was done on the Caliph site only and indicated to me in both, both tests the presence of VOCs. So if the source was not determined to be at the dry cleaner's location, the source is still indeterminate, correct? I don't necessarily know that that's, that's true or relevant. I think Judge Polito addresses that question in his decision in Supreme Court, mm -hmm. where he is satisfied um, regarding uh, emissions, whether they come from down the street, uh, from the dry cleaner or from the Callet site itself, or quite possibly from something that was there in the 1800s before any recent history. Uh, again, I, 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 I remind you that our, our purpose in Seeker is, 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 not to, is, is, is not to identify and clean up any of the sins of the past. Our purpose in Seeker are to find potential or not potential impacts and uh, therefore uh, come up with a, me uh, a mitigation method. Well, so, so in this particular case, the, the appellate division said that the prior review done by this council raised the potential that the VOPs were significant and that the merely recommended, if you will, uh, uh, med mitigation that this board came up with back in 2011 should have been a mandate as opposed to a recommendation, and that's why we're doing what we're doing tonight. Well, well part of the thing is also to, to look at potential environmental impacts here, correct? Well, do realize that if you put the two decisions together, uh, almost every environmental impact that has been raised in this particular case has been resolved in the city's favor. Uh, I understand that the, the opponents wish to uh, constantly relitigate the past or introduce perhaps things that weren't decided before, but the last sentence of the appellate division decision said every other contention by the petitioner has no merit. Uh, so all of the various issues that were raised previously, with the sole exception of mandating uh, the vapor venting system, uh, was, was found in our favor uh, by, by the uh, appellate division. Moreover, uh, Judge Polito specifically finds that issues that were raised when the college did their review in 2012, uh, issues such as, as, as traffic uh, uh, and, and uh, groundwater quality uh, were uh, resolved satisfactorily in the project's uh, favor. So I, I, I think I understand what you're saying, and I'm not disagreeing with it. What I'm trying to ask is that we focus our attention not on a bunch of other things, but on the one thing that the courts ordered us to do, which is to, which is to mandate the, uh, the uh, uh, sub-slab depressurization system as opposed to merely recommending it, which is what we did last time. Right. So, so that is the reason we answered that one question in part two, uh, yes, we find that it's significant, although some of us disagree, and that we then move on to part three of the AAF and mitigate it. Okay, what I'm saying is we've got 14,000 cubic yards of dirt that's gonna be taken away and removed. You know, one cubic yard is, is uh, 2,025 pounds so we're removing 2.8 million pounds of dirt here. Um, this soil has not been tested for the presence of VOCs or any other contaminants for that matter. If this soil is contaminated, we're moving it 
taking it someplace else, we're, we're passing the problem along. You 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 argued that last. I, I did, but I'm, I'm I, it wasn't in the record. It wasn't on tape either. So okay. Um, on uh, the AEC C report of February 17th, uh, and I have it marked here. It talks about historical leaching of uh, cleaning solutions that spilled during the building when it was used to store, clean, and process and repair furs. Um, to me, that issue still is there. Um, I don't see how a vapor intrusion barrier uh, is going to clean up the area. Um, the source has not been determined. The soil and uh, foundations of the building, however, sealed. Everyone knows that even with new construction, as a building settles, the concrete and such checks and cracks, the potential of, of these vapors intruding back and bypassing the subslab system exists. Um, the current recommendation of the vapor barrier requires periodic monitoring. You know, absent from this is what's the frequency for the monitoring? Is it daily or is it once every 50 years? That hasn't been defi defined here. Um, the plan, what is the plan for monitoring here if, if the monitoring d yields a uh, unsafe level of VOCs, what is the mitigation plan? At the po that point, it seems to me that it, we really don't know what's underneath the slab. The old slab's up. The stuff's in the ground. We, we understand it's in the ground. We admit it, it's in the ground. But it appears to me we really don't understand how much we have to mitigate until we do these tests. That's my hesitancy. I, 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 I think that the, just the merely fact of putting a Band-Aid on the building doesn't help. That's not really a question, but let me respond with what I think what I think uh, the engineers uh, uh, who weighed in on that issue uh, say that none of the level of vapors detected were of such a level of of, of substance as to as to red flag, if you will, the, the supposition that the soil beneath the vapors uh, are highly contaminant or inordinately contaminant. As a matter of fact, the engineers specifically found that the type of vapors found are typical for an urban setting. So that really, uh, what what you're identifying is is a, is a cleanup of of every single parcel, perhaps in downtown Auburn, and it's it's not warranted. If if something occurred in centuries before that created a a real alarm. The monitoring and testing that was done in 2011 would have met so certain levels or would have reached certain thresholds to red flag the situation for further remediation. Those levels, the engineers determined, were not significant enough to do what you ask. And so that while your, your argument, gee, let's be safe instead of sorry, has a certain persuasion to it. It's not what the court has asked us to do. And, and so that what I'm recommending to you that we do is to do what the courts have asked us to do. And, and while there may be many, many other things uh, that you as an engineer or I as an attorney could think of, the courts have not asked us to mitigate those things that we might be able to conceive as possibilities. The purpose of Seeker is not to eliminate anything that might be there. The purpose of Seeker is to identify those things which there are reasonable signs, uh, reasonable signs saying that potential significance exists. While your argument two weeks ago and your argument tonight, I hear, I understand, the courts have not asked us to do what you want. Well, um, 
again, we just got this document tonight and I, I skimmed it and uh, we have a, uh, basically a Judge Polito during oral argument engaged in a discussion with respect to the refusal to conduct soil testing in part as follows. This is the court. Do you know if the slab is going to be removed? Ms. March, it's removed. It's already been removed. The court, so they have direct access, direct, so they have access directly to the soil below it. Ms. March, uh-huh. The court, is that where they test, tested the soil below? Ms. March, nope. I believe when the demolition sampling took place, the slab was still there because the demolition wasn't 100% complete. So the slab, so the sub-slab sampling that was done had the slab there. The court, but the slab was removed. Ms. Marsh, yes. The court, and there wasn't sampling taken of the soil? Ms. Marsh, no. The court, that's what they're trying to get at. What is in the soil in terms of the contaminants? Ms. Marsh, that's what the petitioners would like us to do. The court, well, that's what everybody wants to get at to make sure there's no problem with the soil. But you would not have tested the actual soil itself since you couldn't get at it. So this indicates to me that the judge was very sensitized to this problem. Well, that's uh, remember that's a reading of that's a reading of uh, a colloquy between Miss Marsh and the judge that occurred before the judge issued his decision. The decision which you have, uh, which I've provided to you, doesn't go into any of that. When you're in a court of law, various things are discussed. And what, what the four corners of the decision are, are what the court's order is, not the various interesting discussions that occurred in that particular case that you're reading uh, that Mr. Huffman provided us with earlier between Ms. Marsh and, and, uh, and Judge Polito. Uh, a lot of, you know, courts and lawyers talk about a lot of things that don't eventuate into the final order. That happened to have been one of them. If Judge Polito had wanted us to do what you're asking, he would have said so. He I didn't let, say so. I, I believe he let it up to us to decide that. In fact, in a discussion with you at one point in time, that was brought up and said, well, we may want to do that just to be safe. And that was a this point of a discussion that, uh, that we had uh, probably about a month or so ago or better. Well, it was more, than, it was more than a month ago, and, and that's not a, a, a quote, but that, you know, that's something that you could consider. And that's within your province as a lead agency. Again, though, that's not my advice in the case. I hearken back to what I said earlier, Pete. The purpose of Seeker is not to exhaust every single thing that's out there. There's a, there's a million things that could happen. Uh, well, UFO could strike the theater. We're not expected to put up a shield to keep UFOs from hitting the theater. I mean, so you can start thinking and thinking and thinking of a million things and we're gonna go on forever. Well, what I'm trying to do is narrow us down specifically to those things which the court has ordered us to do. I, again, I, I Andy, I'm very sensitive to the fact that you want to do more. Andy, what I'm, what I'm going to say is, the impact that will this proposed action affect air quality? And the answer to this is yes. Okay, the potentially large impact box was checked. So to me, this points to an issue that we have to decide. We, we this was a good discussion, that, that I'm glad you raised that, because even though it seemed clear from me in, in the discussions that occurred in 2011 that this council thought the VOP issue to be insignificant and did what it did gratuitously and it ended up biting us. Uh, we, we, Steve and I tossed around the possibility of answering that insignificant or significant, uh, moderate or insi uh, significant. <coughs> And if you read the directions, and it was really Steve who pointed this out to me, the directions say that in order to get to part three, you ought to check the significant box. So that, but it's, and then it's specific, the directions specifically say uh, because, you, because you check that box, 
doesn't mean that, that, that you found something potentially really bad. What you're checking that box does gets us to the mechanism of conditioning our, our conditioned negative declaration by filling out part B and doing what the courts have asked us to do. Well, to me, this tells me that uh, uh, just taking it at face value, it affects air quality and it has a potential large impact. That's what it's telling me. So that being said, I, I, I am very sensitized to the pro problem here of VOCs. Um, again, in, in the documents, there's no, no periodic time given for when is this monitoring taking place. It's totally absent, missing. So I don't think you're No, job, that is job. not correct, actually. Where is it? It's not in any of this, and it's uh, not in here. In the... It's not in your discussion document, and it's not in here. It's in the part one of the full EAF, which I refer to in my discussion document. And that refers to... What the, the part one? That refers to the letter of July 9th, 2012, by AECC, where the monitoring regime is um, outlined. What page in part one? Uh, if you look at tab 25, counselor. Got it? That's the AECC letter. If you turn to the second page, counselor. Mm -hmm. It says sample collection. The scope of the work shall include the collection of representative air samples, gives some kind of description there. Based on the size of the basement, is it estimated that a minimum of four samples will be needed, approximately three samples inside the basement and one ambient outside sample to determine quality conditions. Strongly recommended that the sampling be conducted during the late fall winter months, as this time when the heating system will be operational. Uh, these conditions generally represent the worst case scenario for the accumulation of vapors, and so on. So there is, it says it recommends, but there's no specific timetable given. A recommendation is not necessarily need to be followed. If it said once every year. The condition or, negative declaration is mandating that these recommendations be followed, if you follow me. I'm rereading this paragraph. It's talking about four samples at one, at, at roughly in a recommended time, but for how long? I would imagine you would take the four samples uh, the first year that it was in operation. No, these four samples will be needed inside the basement. These four samples will be taken once a year in different locations, according to this. But how many years? It does not say how many. It does not say. So again, like I said, we have the potential exists for some ground contamination here in not only in the groundwater but in the soil that we're removing, transporting somewhere else and dumping it on somebody else's property. Again, like I say, until we have soil samples tested and groundwater testing done, we have no idea what the magnitude of this mitigation is. You can't mitigate what you don't know. Let's move on. Uh, Council, with your permission, I'd like to take about a 10 minute break, if we could, please. All right, Council, Council Graney? Councilor? Rizzi? Sure. We'll be in recess for 10 minutes. I'd like to call us all back to order, and I, I, we owe all of you folks a brief explanation. One of our council members, as you can see, had to leave the meeting uh, under a, a serious situation. So at this time, I'm going to ask for a motion to table this in fairness to all the council members, Council Rizika, Mr. Lynch, and, and Mr. Fusco, so all of this can be aired out in front of the entire council. So council will entertain a motion to table this for the time being. I'll, I'll make that motion. By Council Rizika, seconded by Council Graining. 
and uh, please call the roll to table this. Councilor Graney? Yes. Councilor Camardo? In all fairness, I'm going to have to abstain because I've been abstaining oh, all fair. along Sorry. with the um, data project. Councilor Rizika? Yes. Uh, Mayor Quill. Yeah, before I vote, I, I do apologize to everyone. I know you spent a lot of time here and it's not the most fun thing to do on a Thursday <coughs> evening, but uh, we have to do what we have to do also. And Your, Your Honor, one request has been conveyed to me by people uh, both for and uh, well on either sides of this issue is that since it is going to be continued to the next week, uh, is it possible to make this the first thing on the agenda? Uh, we've had a lot of things that a lot of people have waded through and uh, certainly I think they're all very understanding of Mr. Smith's situation. It's a work session. Uh, work session. Mayor, do Two we weeks. want to have a special meeting for this? Two weeks. Let, let's, let's, let's take the vote on this and then discuss what we're going to do Two from there. One week and see how he is. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to vote yes to table this. Uh, the, city ma the city manager just informed us that it is a very light schedule for next week. So if we move to next week, it'll be the first, the first item on the agenda. It's not a regular voting session, so we will do that. Unless, uh, if, if situation is out of our control, we may have to bump it out two weeks. So that's, that's the best I could tell you. But we have to be fair to everyone here. All right. So Mr. Fusco, does that answer your question? Yes, it does, Your Honor. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Thank you. Uh, moving along. Going back to local laws. None. Table legislation. None. Other business. None. No. That's not you. <laughs> Mr. Sobby, you want to start out? <laughs> Um, Mayor and Council, just a, a few items, and I know Councilor Smith was interested in these, so I'll just mention them, uh, and if you want to have some discussion, we can. Um, earlier in the week, I sent you a, a little memo summarizing the discussion that I've had with the County Administrator regarding sales tax distribution. Um, she's reviewed that with the Government Affairs Committee. What seems to be evolving is uh, if, if we're going to do a sales tax distribution, the support would probably exist only for one that's a flat percentage, <laughs> something to be negotiated. Uh, I had informed you that we thought maybe a percentage with some equation that would include population, but uh, uh, I believe the county's input is that it would be simpler and easier just to stick with a, a flat percentage. Um, we also discussed the possibility of an element of a tax formula being a dedicated revenue stream, as was discussed here two weeks ago, um, for economic development. And our discussions revolved around uh, not necessarily the amount, but creating some kind of an amount within that formula, but setting a floor and a cap on that so that it would never go below a certain dollar amount of support and it wouldn't just keep going up and up and up. There would have to be a conscious decision to, to go above whatever number is agreed to. Uh, apart from that, we had some discussions about some shared services issues and uh, human resources and, and some other items which I'm going to follow up on. I don't know if there are any questions on? No, no. Okay. Um, York Street. Uh, we are closing in on finishing that project and it's starting to look really good. If you've been down there, it's like night and day. But there is a piece of York Street uh, that goes from Quarry to North Street that is not part of this project. It was part of the uh, other York Street project, which was to continue Walsh Boulevard through. Now that project is questionable as to when it will get done. So what could happen is we could be left for an indefinite period of time with a thousand feet of pretty rough pavement leading into this really nicely, uh, well completed and landscaped uh, portion of York Street. So uh, Bill Lupian negotiated with the contractor a price of $43,000 to mill and repave that segment of the roadway. Uh, we think that's economical to do at this point in time because the contractor's already mobilized there. So that would be a change order. It would be within the scope of the existing bond that was issued for the project. Doug, I know we don't have any other <coughs> option but to do this, but it's unfortunate with the project 85% reimbursed, which York Street was, that we didn't go all the way to the um, intersection there. It's, it was a lost opportunity on our part, So, but we have no other, other option but to make the road, right. uh, pave the road to meet the rest of it. Weren't we held up by state DOT or yes. something else because of the, 
the connection on the other on the uh, what the east side of North the Street. Roundabout. The roundabout, yeah, the roundabout. So I, I think that's why council didn't act in that regard earlier, Council Camargo. I, I feel we owed it to those merchants down there. I mean, they've been putting up for a Absolutely. whole lot for the past they, five, six years, and they they put up with it for, for long enough. And, and, and as we discussed, uh, that that money is part of a bond, so we're very limited as to what we can do. It have to be real repair somewhere or whatever to use it. So right. move forward with it, please. Okay. And the the other item, uh, I know I've talked to some of you individually about the East Side Heights subdivision and the issues associated with that. Um, and I'll ask Mr. Rossi to jump in here, but I'll just give you briefly. Two, two elements of that project that uh, will come to the council. One is the dedication of the street. Um, there's been discussion about the need to do that in order for the developer to get a HOA approved by the state that would take ownership of a detention basin on the uh, project site. And the, uh, the second issue is the naming of the street, which uh, is, was named uh, by a prior council uh, it was intended to be revisited, and there's been some discussion about uh, how that should be approached. Uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions about that, but that, that is an item that we may want to bring back uh, as soon as next week. I was going to say, is it, pos is it possible we could get this on the agenda for next week? Because um, I believe that some of the building seasons running, our time is short in the building season, and they wanted to get building in that area, so if possible. I know we're going to be voting on the secret if we could vote on this next week also if you would have it ready by then you think or it's possible okay. it, it um, it's somewhat dependent upon uh, unfortunately the street name which mm -hmm. i can discuss with everyone uh, well we I, maybe we could have as a placeholder then uh, uh, yeah uh, I'll, I'll see what we can do sure. in the interim I, i've spoken to the developer's attorney and we're trying to work on that element of it they could also be a walk on if, if sure. things all yeah. come together. Yeah. Uh, those, those are the only items I had, Mayor. Thank you. Thank I just you. had a couple Council things, uh, and I'll keep this real short. Doug, I know uh, when the president visited here, you provided us uh, overtime was about twenty-eight thousand dollars, I believe, in police, fire, and DPW. Uh, yes. Is any of that money reimbursable? I know it's hard sure. to ask for things like that, but the city's. We're in difficult times right now, and that we could <laughs> every penny helps. It, it may be futile, but we are going to pursue that through Congressman Maffei's office okay. to see if there's a possibility to get some form of reimbursement. Mm -hmm. It was it was an honor to have the president here, <laughs> yeah. so it's kind of sure. well, I understand. hard to do that. But we're in a, a serious financial situation, so Washington we need to Washington brings a lot of money, and we need it. But uh, the second thing, I just real quick, if you could go over these, I see you sent us letters out, which we had asked you about follow up with the water rates in the town of Aurelius and Senate. If yes. you could just touch upon those, please. Um, just as background, the Aurelius and Senate have contracts with the city. Those contracts say that they will pay 115% of the retail rate that's paid by our residents. Um, up to this point in time, there had been a, uh, well, it had just been the practice that they got the rate that the Cuga County Water Authority was getting, which was a bulk discount rate. So they were using enough water to uh, supposedly trigger that element in their contracts, which is a favored nations clause. Uh, Corporation Council Andy Fusco looked closely at that, wrote a lengthy opinion, determined that they really are not eligible for that rate reduction, and I've sent letters to both Senate and Aurelius notifying them that October 1st they would be billed for the full 115% per the contracts. Doug, and we talked about one time, what kind of revenue would you think that would generate the increase? What is it, about 50000 I think? You know, I, I didn't calculate it, Councillor. I hesitate to say. Okay. Is going forward from October. 1st, yes, right? yes. That's all I had, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Do we have a request for executive session? I have one. No. A... no. No. With that, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Councilor Camardo, seconded by Councilor Graney. Mm -hmm. If you call the roll, please. Councilor Graney? Yes. Councilor Camardo? Yes. Councilor Ruzica? Yes. Mayor Quill? Yes. We're adjourned.